Hi, this is Kendrick at worldmedicalschool.org. We're going to talk about RH disease, also called RH isoimmunization. So somewhere on this blood cell, there either is or is not a small protein called RHD. Now the RH proteins are kind of like the ABO proteins in that we use them to classify blood groups, but they also have their own purpose, which uh, isn't really important for this, this uh, discussion. So about, uh, about one out of six moms don't have the RH uh, protein on their blood cells. And this is in the Caucasian populations. Non-Caucasians actually have a pretty, uh, pretty low percentage of RH negative. And uh, so one out of six moms uh, get together with uh, the majority of, of normal population, which does have the RH uh, positive gene, and then they produce an RH positive baby. This happens about one in 10 pregnancies. You have an RH positive baby. So what happens here is uh, the mother who doesn't have uh, this RH antigen if they come into contact with the baby's blood, which does have the RH antigen, then of course uh, an immunologic reaction happens. And the mom, uh, seeing this as a foreign body, produces antibodies to it. So they, they make these uh, anti-RHD uh, IgGs. Um, and this is more likely to happen in ABO-compatible uh, mother and, and child, because if the child is, uh, child's blood is not ABO compatible, then once it's introduced to the mother's immune system, it will be destroyed so quickly that the mother's immune system won't have time to re react to the RH uh, antigen. So uh, this usually doesn't have much effect on the baby uh, because it, uh, the mother is just building this immunity and so it doesn't really it doesn't really cross uh, the placenta enough to cause any problems for the the first baby, but then this Rh negative mom and the Rh positive daddy they get together again and have a, another Rh positive baby, and this time we got the IgGs the anti RHD IgGs crossing the placenta, and they are of course attaching to these red blood cells and causing hemolysis. And uh, this, this leads to what we call erythroblastosis fetalis, which erythro, eth, erythroblasts are just precursors to red blood cells. And so um, we get uh, uh, an increase in erythroblasts circulating in the fetal blood system. And this hemolysis uh, causes anemia because we don't have enough uh, red blood cells anymore. And the anemia, uh, by a mechanism I don't quite understand, leads to uh, hydrops fetalis. Now this is, the, this is the severe cases that we actually get to hydrops fetalis, uh, but, uh, but it, it does happen um, if it's not managed correctly. So um, the complications including hydrops fetalis, uh, fetal hypoxia just because we're not circulating oxygen, we don't have enough blood, acidosis from the hemolysis, uh, cornicterus from the hemolysis, uh, prematurity and death are, are both uh, potential complications of fetal hypoxia. So this is an important thing for us to uh, pick up on and treat. So in order to diagnose this, all uh, bl mothers are tested, and generally, if they are Rh negative, then the father will also be tested for his blood type. And so, if uh, if he's positive, then they're considered at risk. And if that's the case, then we're going to get uh, maternal Rh titers, which basically just measures the amount of uh, antibodies in the maternal blood. And if that uh, if that level gets over uh, uh, one and eighteen, um, then we start doing serial ultrasounds, or if that's not available, um, we do amniocentesis, and that uh, helps us to uh, follow the baby to see if there's a significant amount of anemia going on. 
So how do we prevent or treat this from happening? Uh, or prevent it from happening or treat it once it does, I mean. So if we could potentially, I guess, say uh, no RH negative moms get together with RH positive dads. But there's enough in the population that that probably wouldn't go over very well. Plus, we have better ways to deal with the situation. So the m major thing that we can do is stop uh, sensitization from happening. And we'll talk about some of the instances in which uh, sensitization happens. But, uh, but we administer Rogam, which is uh, uh, essentially an anti-RHD IgGs to the mother, and um, those IgGs will suppress the maternal immune system from uh, creating its own IgGs. And uh, so that's the most important thing we can do, is prevent sensitization from happening. Um, if, it, if it does happen, if the mother is sensitized and there already are these maternal uh, IgGs floating around, uh, crossing the placenta, then our options are to try and deliver the baby before uh, they progress to uh, severe anemia and high drops fatalis. And uh, if if we can't do that safely, meaning if the baby's lungs aren't matured enough yet, then we may have to uh, treat the baby's anemia uh, with blood transfusions. So that can help to uh, keep the anemia under control and prevent the high drops fatalis. So Rogam, like we mentioned it's an anti-RHD antibody. And I've got the question mark here, not because I'm not sure that that's what it is, but because it just seems maybe a little bit counterintuitive to give uh, a antibody which is the cause of the problem. So we're, we're giving an antibody that could potentially uh, cross the placenta and uh, cause uh, problems for the baby. But really what we're doing is we are, uh, we are giving these antibodies which uh, can have a negative feedback on the maternal uh, immune system and prevent the maternal antibodies from forming and creating uh, its own uh, plasma cells that will in turn continue to create anti-RHD IgGs. I think that's basically how it works. It's a simplistic view of it anyway. So uh, when do we give this? We give it at 28 weeks um, just as a prophylaxis. And we also give it at any sensitizing event. So any sensitizing event would be uh, potential uh, events which would involve uh, fetal blood meeting maternal blood. So this would happen in miscarriage. This would happen in elective abortions. Uh, amniocentesis is a possible time this could happen. Ectopic pregnancies, abruption and placenta previa are big ones. And then I didn't put on here, but just normal birth. So we give this at birth as well as at 28 weeks. And I should have included the uh, doses on here, and I can't remember them right off the top of my head, uh, so I'll have to have to follow up with that later. But um, and then also we want to follow beta HCG for for a year after uh, after we have a potential, uh, for example, a miscarriage or or an abortion, and uh, prevent. Uh, pregnancy from happening in in that time frame. So thanks to, uh, to uh, Roger IOPFM for uh, giving us that uh, great red blood cell picture. If you want to uh, help out, you can leave a comment at the end of the video, which uh, will test the next student on the content of the video. Or you can go to worldmedicalschool.org backslash volunteer if you want to get more involved. Thanks.